एक रिक्शे वाले ने देखा ब्रह्मचारी जी खड़े भारी बस्ता देकर आया हमने बोला भैया फलानी फलानी जगह जाना है बोला सौ रुपया दूंगा काम था बस मात्र पच्चीस रुपए का Now, once I was traveling, and I needed an auto rickshaw at that time, I was having a heavy luggage with me. So now, that auto rickshaw one, he tried to take advantage of me and asked four times more price. Now. I said that I'll not give this, and I started walking by myself. Now there was another cycle rickshaw who said that I want to take you. Whatever you will give me, I'll take. I said, No, no. Tell me what's the appropriate price that you will require. He said, What do you give generally? I said that I give twenty rupees, but I it's hot weather and. I have a luggage also, so you can take thirty. So now that person said, "Okay, I give you five rupees discount. You can give me twenty-five." Now when I sat, now pulling the rickshaw, he became so so tired, like full of sweat. Now my room was on the second floor, and he saw that it's a heavy luggage. So I said that, "Okay, you can take five more rupees." So he took uh, uh, the luggage on the top floor at my room. So I thought that he is putting so much effort. I gave ten rupees more. So he said that, oh, I actually take money from every passenger, but I want to serve also the devotees. So I'll not take. I said, no, no, you are poor person. You should take it. And he didn't take. He got very stubborn. No, please let my service stay, Maharaj. I will also get some blessings of the Lord. We keep earning a whole day every day. Now just think, he just left that thirty rupees as service. You feel like giving something to that person, so I gave a box of sweet, and that box does not come less than hundred, one hundred fifty rupees. He gave up thirty rupees, sacrificed thirty rupees, and he got so much. He got the full uh, sweet box, and I also said that you can give me phone number. There are so many passengers who come, devotees come. You will get uh, so much uh, uh, customers. So he got the second benefit. Got clients from us. Now sometimes there is bhandara in the temple. So third thing is that you can come to eat the feast. So little sacrifice did for the Lord, and then there is such a strong relationship. Not taking that little payment, there is a strong relationship developed. That's why our Guruji used to stay say that if there is relationship and money, then don't give importance to money. Give importance and respect to relationship because that relationship will stay all the time. The money will come and go. The same way, once it's a very old times, uh, maybe eighteen, nineteen uh, eighty-nine, nineteen ninety-eight. Sorry, we went to a press person. Uh, we got actually. Betrayed by someone, we wanted to get a book published. He took all the money and then he just ran away. Now we went to another press person who runs a press, printing press. So we said that please just publish this. When he heard everything, he called that person and said that we are from your line only. Why you are betraying? He said that oh, what's your thing in this? Just stay away from that. So he got disrespected. Now this person who is running the printing press, he said, "Okay, don't worry. We will just publish it. Thousand copies of this little book. It's okay." 
I said, it's okay. You just tell. We will give whatever is there. He said, no, no, no. We also want to serve. So they published 1,000 copies as a service. They sacrificed a little bit. They could have earned 30, 40,000, but they served. So from that 98, now it's 2024. Got such a strong relationship that they both are sitting here. <laughs> All glory to you. Rakesh Ji and Mukesh Ji. Now, after that, so many books got published. It's because we have developed such strong relationship with them. So even if the cost is higher, we will always get them published. Every relationship needs a sacrifice, be it of husband and wife. If the sacrifice is there, then the love stays. Wherever there is a selfishness, that love is gone, because love demands sacrifice. So always give more preference to relationship, not to any other thing. And like this with the Lord also. Give priority to develop relationship with the Lord. Just hearing some clapping from 50 people and all and then becoming desiring for that and becoming happy. So that's like getting the payment at instantly. Just stay humble and you will be more happy. A great singer, I heard this 10 years back. When he was very young, he used to sing bhajan for Thakurji. And once he stood up in the stage in the school and he sang one bhajan of Thakurji and everyone clapped. And when he came back home, then the mother slapped him strongly. You performed kirtan. You did kirtan to get clappings of people, to get appreciations from people. Never do like this. A mother also is like a guru. Sing bhajan of the Lord only for the happiness of the Lord, not for the happiness of the people. And since then, that person, every Saturday, he sings for the Lord since then. That's our Satish Prabhu. So a mother, the slap of a mother sometimes teaches so much. The slap is very necessary. That can be a physical slap or a slap from a circumstance. It teaches so many things. It gives such inspiration. Have you heard the name of Tan Sen? He used to sing at the palace of Akbar. He used to take, sing such nicely from his Arab. Then rains would come and start giving rainfall. Such qualified singer he was, such strength in her voice, in his voice. Even the stones used to melt from his voice. Akbar said that if you are like this, then how would your Guruji be? Who is your Guruji? He said, my Guruji is Swami Haridas. Oh, can you bring your Guruji here once? 
Pratan Singh said, Oh, he started laughing. He said, My Guruji, <laughs> he is not like me. You are a great king. I have come here for your happiness. And my Guruji does not consider anyone except the Lord as the Supreme. He does not satisfy anyone except the Supreme Lord. Now seeing, hearing this, Akbar became more, more restless to meet him. He said, who is that Guruji? Please, I want to meet him. He said, you can come to Vrindavan. Because he does not leave Vrindavan. And he sings only for Bihariji, not for anyone else. Akbar said, okay, then I'll come and if I demand, if I ask and request, will he sing? No, no, no. He will only sing whenever he wants to sing for Bihari. Oh, Tansen, please do something. I want to hear your Guruji singing. Tansen said that, okay, tomorrow come and I'll think about something. Now, sitting in the hut, Tansen ji is singing and deliberately making some fault in that rag. Now, Guruji, who is sitting in the other hut nearby, he heard that he has actually made a fault and he said, Hey, hey, did I teach you like this? Give me the instrument. And then he started singing the rag. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Then Tansen sings, the stone melts. When Swami Haridas is singing, then Bihari ji's heart melts. Thakurji's heart melts. Akbar, seeing this, hearing this, he just paid obeisances on the ground itself. Tansen said, don't go further. Just paid obeisances to that land, to that Guruji. Akbar has seen so many miracles actually. He saw one miracle of Vrindavan. He was moving from Delhi to Agra with his whole army and on the way there were small two uh, ponds. He was very hung, like thirsty because it was very hot. Now he saw a sadhu doing bhajan. He said, Maharaj, Maharaj I am very thirsty. Can I get some water? The sadhu said that you see these two little ponds are there, you can drink water from there. Said Maharaj, not just me, but uh, the ministers, elephant and horses, everyone needs water. Now the sadhu said that this water will never get finished, you can drink. Now Akbar thought that these people in Vrindavan, they are very miraculous. So he started drinking, it was like nectar. He made all the other ministers, soldiers, everyone, all the horses, elephants, they were drinking and that little pond stayed intact. This Maharaj, this is miracle. What is this? The sadhu said that, oh, this is not any miracle. This is Radha Kund, this is Sham Kund. You have actually drunk the lotus, Charnamrit of Radha Ji. Oh, it's a great thing. I also want to serve Vrindavan in some way. Sadhu said, Oh, you cannot serve Vrindavan. Even Brahma Ji, he just rolls on the ground. What are you? Brahma, who is the creator. He wants to become a stone in Braj. You go to Barsana. That mountain on which the Barsana temple is there, that mountain is Brahmaji. Brahmaji has become that great rock mountain, thinking that, oh, Radha Ji's lotus feet will come on me, her foot dust will come on my head. So that's why whenever you walk to Barsana, you should pay obeisances to Brahmaji because you are walking on Brahmaji. That Brahmaji is like a mountain there in Barsana. So what service you will do, Akbar? You can just leave from here. He said, Maharaj, O Prabhu, O Sadhu, I am a great king. Please give some service. He said, okay, go. In Keshi Ghat in Vrindavan, in that Ghat, there is a little brick broken. You can just fix it. 
now akbar got little angry and he laughed also you are making joke on me do you not know what i can do and you are disrespecting me by giving me such small task the sadhu said you can go and serve now akbar thought that if he has said like this there must be something akbar went to keshi ghat at the bank of yamuna ji and saw that there was this brick broken and at that time for one second akbar saw darshan had darshan of vrindavan's real nature that how this ghat is not made of ordinary bricks but of chintamani desire fulfilling stones and it's made of that akbar got really really amazed thinking that if i put my all wealth i will not be able to get one brick repaired he just paid obeisances to that land of vrindavan and said dhanya ti dhanya those who reside in this land of vrindavan and those who want to reside on this land of vrindavan i just pay obeisances to them so that the thing that relationship is very important start developing relationship with the lord there comes a stage a state that that doctor on which we trust on whom we trust the most we just we become completely faithless when the lord says when the doctor says that everything is in the hand of the lord when the big big doctor they just raise their hand that i cannot do anything there is a ray of hope at that time and that ray of hope is converging to whom to the lord that oh lord you are the one who can really help me we have a god brother who is a doctor he do brain surgery he is a devotee so he used to tell me he once told me like very many years back he said that brain surgery is very subtle and while i am doing i chant maha mantra praying that this patient of mine should be saved and there is this one nerve which stops then our heart stops and we die so at that time while doing the surgery i just pray to the lord that may this nerve starts working every day he chants 16 64 round 32 rounds he gets his salary that's not a thing but he desires that the person's life gets saved the patient's life said so that i pray and i have seen so many miracles many assistants doctors they say that oh this person is gone because the nerve is dead and i pray o oh prabhu hare krishna hare krishna i pray and i see after some years the nerve started moving so first he is a doctor and then he is a devotee also so this the stage when just raising the hand we surrender to the lord there are so many such bondages the ropes that we which we want to open but the, we cannot open the knots you know what knots we have that on the legs and on the hand also those pipes of glucose that's also is a bondage so at different bondages when we recognize them we really remember the lord so that's why it's important to develop a relationship with the lord and that relationship develops through holy name there was relationship with draupadi ji and that's why she raised the hand before that draupadi was thinking my husband will save me my father in law will save me then she put her own strength catching her sari that i am also strong when she found that no strength is working then there was only one strength what raising the hand hey govind hey govind अब तो जीवन हारी द्रौपदी स्टार्टेड सेइंग दिस ओ गोविंद नाउ नो वन कैन सेव मी दैट्स व्हाई भगवान 
develop this relationship. The Lord has such strong relationship with Arjun, with Pandavas. Krishna is sleeping on the same bed with Arjun. One side Krishna's feet and Arjun's head, other side Arjun's feet and Krishna's head and they are embracing and sleeping. When towards Uttara's womb, Brahmastra came, then the Lord thought that I can just destroy it with my Sudarshan. But let me get into the womb and see how my Arjun's grandchild is like. So, he is getting restless. He is getting very much excited to have, to see the grandchild of Arjun. Krishna entered into the womb of Uttara and Parikshit ji had darshan of the Lord. So great personalities like Dhruv Prahlad who had darshan of the Lord at just five years of age and see the glories of Parikshit Maharaj that they had darshan of Krishna in the womb of the mother itself. That Parikshit, while describing this, Chutha Goswami is saying that, oh, I was actually explaining his birth past times, but I just drowned into the Vatsalya of Mahabharat past times. Parikshit ji took birth. Brahmanas made a prophecy that there is no doubt in this that this fortunate child will become a great soul, Mahabhagavat, in the future. Pandavas, they left this planet and went to Swarga, heaven. Parikshit was made the king. Parikshit once went to the forest and he became thirsty. Saw a rishi in meditation, Shamik Rishi. He called out that, Oh Rishi, please give me some water. I am thirsty. But he was so much absorbed in his meditation, he does not know and have external consciousness. Now, taking the arrow, Parikshit Maharaj, he just lifted a dead snake and applied on the neck of this Shamik Rishi. Shamik Rishi, he is still absorbed. Shamik Rishi's son, Shringi Rishi, he was taking bath in the pond and everyone came and said that your father is disrespected. Shringi Rishi took water in the hand and then cursed Parikshit Rishi. Iti langyate maryadyat. That king, that abominable king who has actually disrespected my father, I just curse him that after seven days a snake named Takshak will come and bite him and he will die. Shringrishi came running at once to Shamik Rishi and then removed this dead snake and said that, Oh father, the one who have disrespected you like this, I have cursed him that after seven days he will die. Shamik Rishi, in absorption, in meditation, he found that it was Parikshit Maharaj. Then Shamik Rishi started chastising his own son, Shringi, saying that, What did you do? You actually gave a curse to Parikshit Ji. He is a Raj Rishi. Why? You cursed him. Shamik Rishi sent his messengers to inform Parikshit that after seven days you will be bit by a snake, Takshak, and you will die. See, if someone comes to us and say that, oh, after four days you will die, we will die right now only thinking that, oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. We will start saying, I'm going to die. We will not chant out of fear. So Parikshit ji started thinking that, oh, it's okay. One day I had to die. But at least I am the only person who have got this guarantee that I will not die before seventh day. Today, no one in this whole world can stand up and say that I have this many days left. But I am that person who has got this opportunity and great fortune that I have got to know that I will die after seven days. I will not die before that. 
so it's great that the lord has arranged this curse for me maybe the lord wanted to make me renounce this material family life how he is taking every situation positively this is the teaching from this even the unfavorable situation we consider it as very negative but those unfavorable situations those opposite circumstances can make us progress really nicely in bhakti some undesirable circumstances actually boost our bhakti life now the intelligent person he will accept it otherwise he will just cry for that oh this happened that happened are just get the teachings and move move on for example we say that when a clock is stopped for example if it is stopped at 8 o'clock then that clock is useless yes but it has a quality that it will give right time at twice he will it will give right time in the day 8 am in the morning and 8 pm in the morning in the evening this i read this um 15 years back in a diary even a stop clock that even a stop clock gives correct time twice a day i read in their press only printing press so saw some positive thing in that no uh, non working clock also but how is our eyes we see bad things in a good person also and then there is another vision which can see good things in a bad person also you have seen uh, heard the name of buddh and we have heard the ungli mal katha so there was this ungli mal he used to just kill some person cut the finger and make a garland of the fingers and apply on the neck to prove that there is no one more bigger terrorist than me now once buddha was preaching in a village and he was about to leave so the villager said that don't go from the way of forest I said why because there is this demon like person whose name is ungli mal he just kills everyone don't go from the way of forest buddha ji laughed said oh first i was thinking i'll not walk from this path of forest and take the other path but now since you have said this then there is such person then i'll go from this path only oh no maharaj ji don't go from there oh you worry about me but i am in meditation i am just very much into my meditation i have to die some day if i'll die 20 years later or if i die today there will be no difference no difference to earth family friends society country no no difference buddha went alone and that happened this demon like person came at once hey wait who are you who are you buddha ji he started asking who are you who am i i know that but you do not know that who you are i i am ungli mal buddha ji very calmly he is saying you are introducing your body through this but in real who you are you yourself don't know hey wait there only buddha ji said i have been waiting for so long now it's your time to wait and settle like this very beautiful words he is saying completely calm and composed so what whatever this ungli mal this demon like person is hearing he his heart is transforming see ungli mal is saying who you are i know who i am but you have to understand who you are hey just settle there only i have been settled for so long 
Now it's your time to settle, my friend. I will kill you. Oh, you cannot do anything beyond this. Hey, do you not fear? Buddha just said, Oh, you should be fearful. You should be fearful of me. I don't have any fear from you. Do you know my glory, my strength? He said, Okay, show me. Just bring this branch of the tree. He said, Okay, that's so simple. Just hit once and cut the branch of the tree. He said, She, this is my strength. Buddhaji said, Oh, anyone can show this strength. If you show some greater strength, then I'll consider. What? Now just join this branch that you have broken. It's very easy to break it. The greater thing is that if you can join this branch, he said, oh, I cannot do that. So Buddha said, that's why you are weak. It would be glory, it would be your glory if you can join it, not when you break it. Only Mars, from his hand, the weapon fell on the ground. His heart is melting, his tears are coming from the eyes and asking, who are you, great personality? Said, oh, don't, no need to understand that. I just came to tell you this, that it's very easy to kill. It's very easy to take someone's life. But have you ever given life to someone? Have you ever helped someone? And if you do that, then that will be your strength. That will be your real glory. And that at once he started crying so much. He just did Abhishek of Buddha from his tears. He said, please make me your disciple. He said, come with me. I have actually come to this forest for this only. I don't see a person is sinful or a person is pious. I actually come with a purpose and that purpose is fulfilled. Become my disciple and walk behind me. He started walking. And like this, when they reached to the village, the villagers saw that, oh, Ungli Mal, he has killed my mother, my father, my brother. Everyone took the stone and they started beating him, throwing stones at him. Now this Ungli Mal is bearing all those attacks of the stone. Buddha said, oh, Ungli Mal, everyone is throwing stone at you. You are not reacting? Ungli Mal said, what they are throwing at me, that's less strength. What I am bearing, that's more strength. Let me bear. All the villagers got confused. How? What this Ungli Mal is saying? Then Buddhaji said that he has become tolerant, he has become my disciple. Now, Ungli Mal, shave your head. You have such bad hairs and all this beard and all. Just remove it all. Shave yourself and come to my ashram. Clean yourselves. Now, Ungli Malji also was sitting there and hearing the lectures in the ashram. The king got to know that, oh, this Ungli Mal is residing in the ashram. He has done so many crimes. Now the king came with the soldiers and paid obeisances to Buddha and said that, Who? Where is that Ungli Mal? That enemy of us? The great criminal? My enemy? Now Buddha said that, Oh, your enemy is your own karmas. No, no, that Ungli Mal who used to kill everyone. Now Buddha said, Whoever is Ungli Mal here, just stand up. Now, that Ungli Mal stood up and paid obeisances. Now the king, he took his sword, about to kill. Ungli Mal came forward and said, whatever punishment you want to give, you can give. 
Now saying this, the sword yes. fell from the hand of the king. Such transformation? How? He said, by the mercy of this Guru, Buddha. His words have touched my heart so much that a person like me, if he can change, then what to speak of others? This is the mercy of Guru. This is change, which is very difficult to bring. Parikshit Ji got satisfied. He said, oh, it's great that the Lord cursed me. I arranged this curse. Parikshit Ji leaving, eating, drinking and everything and sleeping, he just sat on the banks of Ganges and he went into meditation. Now all the saints, rishis, they came and said that, Oh Parikshit, for seven days you should do fasting. Oh Parikshit, another said, said you have so much wealth, just donate. Another said, Parikshit, do austerity. Parikshit, do yoga. All the saints, they started saying and suggesting as per their experience. Parikshit ji did not like anyone's words, anyone's suggestions. He said they are good, but very small sadhans. And like this, in that assembly of thousands of sages, Tatra Bhavan, Bhagwan, Vyasabhita. Abdhut, being naked, Shukdev Goswami who never accepts any cloth. Why? Because he is not a Jain Muni. Why? Because he already wear two clothes, the subtle body and gross body. I am a soul. I don't need more clothes. Such beautiful body, such effulgent body, as Shuk, uh, Shukadev Goswami came in the assembly of all these sabha, all these saints, everyone stood up and welcomed Shukadev Goswami and made him sit on a higher platform. And all the other people, all the other sages, stood, uh, sat down on the floor, on the ground. Even the father of Shukadev Ji, Vyas Ji, even the guru of Vyas Dev, Narad Ji, August Rishi, everyone is sitting, great, great personality are sitting on the ground. And Shukadev Ji was given this higher platform. Why? Because this ordinary shuka is not a parrot. He is shuka uvacha, shri shuka. He is shri's shuka means he is the shuka, the parrot of shri ji. That is Radha ji's parrot. So he is the parrot of Radha ji. His glories. That parrot which Radhaji made sit on her hand, just move her fingers on the head of this parrot, give pomegranate seed and give teachings of Bhagavatam and teaches the name of Krishna and then hears Krishna's name from that parrot because the parrot can repeat the words as it is. So Radhaji does not want to hear anything except the names of Krishna and that's why she just taught this parrot so nicely that oh parrot speak Krishna 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 and this shuk parrot at the same tone and the voice of Radhaji calling out Krishna 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 and Radhaji's eyes tears starts coming oh my parrot you make me hear the names of Krishna Thank you so much. So, parrot of Radha Ji. So, Shukadev Goswami is the pet parrot of Radha Ji. So, why would not all the saints stand up in respect to such great personality? 
Now when Shukadev Goswami sat there, Parikshit did not ask what you will eat, what you will drink. He at once asked this question that please make us drink the nectar of Hari Kathamrit. And Shukadev Goswami also saying, oh, let me just settle for a while. Parikshit Maharaj said, no, no, don't have such time. There is only seven days, seven nights left. Please start. Bhagavatam. So this is the place where Shukadev Goswami spoke Bhagavatam Katha to Parikshit Maharaj. All glories to Shukadev Goswami.